I guess you adapt because you sort of like have got Cinderella shoes on. I mean, you've got to be home by a certain time or, or you're going to run out of air. This sort of being a little more housebound physically, you know, with my tanks of oxygen and stuff, and the winter that's about to set in. Although I know uh, I've been selling this like I'm dealing with this, um, you know, impending mortality by by action. And uh, I also thought I'd watch a lot of television. <laughs> so I might not be quite as um, interesting from here on in. People say, oh, you know how Quarrington's dealing with it. It's amazing. He reads. <laughs> it's not that I want to become a more boring person. <laughs> but... But there are certain practicalities that uh, you kind of have to deal with. As the chemotherapist said, what I've got, you know, the, the uh, stage 4 lung cancer, chemotherapy statistically only adds a couple of months to someone's life. As I say, I don't buy that for me necessarily, or I don't buy any of these statistics, but you do think sometimes, well... If it's, you know, if it's a lot of trouble for a couple of months, and if those months are like February and March, you know, you have to maybe rethink. <laughs> like I said in the article, I do, do, uh, I do hope to get back in the boat one day. So I'll shoot for, I'll shoot for August. I think the big secret is to try to, to derive, um, you know, to squeeze all the juice out of things before you go. And um, uh, so... As I, you know, so that's, that's, that's all I'm trying to do.